all fine overnight, probably. The low 11 Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. It will say dry, honest. Later today, dry with sunny periods, average temperatures, maximum temperature 20 Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The outlook rain spreading from the west on Sunday, cool and showery on Monday. Temperature now 12 Celsius, 54 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Okie dokie, me old culture lovers. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. Only ten more to go after tonight. And then um, it's off for two weeks. Well, I mean, I'm off for two weeks. The Midnight Line enjoys its, its summer break. Um, island hopping in Corfu this time. Very nice too. Nice weather. So what we got for you tonight? We've got lots to cram in. John Starkey's going to be on the show on the 27th of this month, which is... Ten days from today, it's uh, Tuesday into Wednesday. John's a clairvoyant, so stick that one in your diaries. And we've also got Plank of the Month, which we're going to do this morning. It's your chance to nominate the person who has wound you up most over the past 28 days, or however long it is since we last did Plank of the Month. I don't know, don't keep count. Any old way up, who's in the running? What happens is this, you nominate um, whoever it is you want to nominate, and if you particularly agree with somebody's nomination and think, yeah, that's a, that's a jolly good idea, then you just phone up and add your support, your weight of support, to that particular nominee. The person with the most votes at the end of the session, who, uh, Madam, which is around about sort of um, two o'clock. Two o'clock, it lines up to around about two o'clock. The winner... The winner gets a letter of us informing them of the, the newfound status as Plank of the Month. An absolutely riveting award. Ranks right up there with the uh, the Oscars and all the rest of it. So who's in the running? Well, I reckon that Barbara Cartland... Um, somebody married Barbara Cartland's daughter, apparently. And there's some sort of connection there with Princess Diana as well. I really, really can't be bothered working out what it is. Something like, I don't know, stepdaughters, something like that. And she married a guy called Count Your Fingers or something like that. Some Frenchy, anyway, who uh, must be off his head. Must be a right plank. Because they say, don't they, if you want to see what your wife looks like, is going to look like in 20 years' time, look at the mother. So, in his case, he'd be looking at Barbara Cartland. And yet, he still went through and married her. Amazing. What a plank. So, Count the Fingers, or whatever his name is, you could put him in. Who else is up there? Or oh, John Major's always good for a vote, I think. Could be this this month because of the the way they've been looking at cutting back on various benefits. You can make whole groups plank of the month if you want because there's, the country seems to be split at the moment. The nation is divided as to whether or not single mums are a bunch of scroungers on the state, as one half suggests, or as the other half suggests, which they generally do tend to be single mothers, I'll give you that, that they are, they're, they're basically just trying to bring up Children against all the odds, having been deserted and abandoned by the fathers who have just reneged on their responsibilities. So you can nominate whole groups, you can nominate individuals. They don't have to be famous. I mean, if the guy down the chip shop's giving you grief or something like that, you don't believe his portions are big enough. Ooh, er, uh, stop tittering at the back, please. Then you can nominate them. One memorable plank of the month a couple of years ago was actually won by a guy who ran a laundrette. So it could be absolutely anybody. It doesn't have to be somebody famous. The numbers you need, 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. Just to make sure that we count them properly, we'll initialise the computer. They'll never fall for that, never. There we go. I know it sounds vaguely like a piece of A4 paper being ruffled by the microphone, but uh, it isn't, honest. It's state-of-the-art uh, wafer chip technology. Can't beat it. Not with a stick. Can't beat it. OK, so I'll put my nomination first. And my nomination is the Securicore driver who was on the M54 at around about a quarter to eight this evening, just past Telford, uh, the turning for Telford Central, on the Shrewsbury-bound carriageway. Um, if that was you, you are my plank of the month because you nearly killed me, pal, because you basically can't drive. And I am going to find out who you are. Ah, I couldn't be bothered hanging around to take your number because I was too busy trying to uh, manoeuvre out to save my life. What basically happened was, me, phew, I looked behind me, I did, looked behind, nothing, clear signal, moved out parallel. Uh, as, I, as I overtook the security van, I was parallel with it, and the I noticed that the wheels started to sort of point towards me, at which point I kicked down a gear and accelerated out of the way. At this point, 
Uh, Chummy decided that he was finally going to signal. And then as he saw me, he, did, he looked. So what he actually did is instead of mirror signal maneuver, he did maneuver signal mirror. And you're a plank, mate, and you're dangerous. And quite frankly, if you are representative of Securicore's drivers, then I wouldn't, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't trust Securicore with my washing, never mind anything valuable. Okay, so Securicore driver on the M54, you are my plank of the month. And I'm going to be tracking you down, buddy. You're not getting away with that one. Right, oh, I enjoyed that. Got that off my chest. <laughs> Loony. Right, uh, before we go to the lines, who's been writing? We've got the dreadful tacky postcard of the year competition. That's up and running. And here's some more dreadful entries. Oh, well, I can't read that one out till Monday for some reason. Here's another totally dreadful one. Um, some really fat and horrible children in Welsh dress. And it's greetings from Wales. Good morning, Wales. Dear Ian, we're writing to complain about Wales. There's so much to do here. Today we're on a day trip to a local telephone box. We've been forced to come on this school poetry week. Today we explored the irony surrounding a red wheelbarrow. We now feel, feel we are true culture lovers and can't wait to get home and jump under the duvet with you. Say hi to Scott, Eric and the captain from Jess and Joe. Read this week commencing Monday the 19th. But there you go. I mean, that really is dreadful. Dreadful little Welsh national dress. Why they bother with it is beyond me. And for no apparent reason, right next to it is the Snowdonia Railway. Great. Okay, send us your tacky postcards. The winning tacky postcard gets um, a Culture Lovers Do It At Midnight t-shirt. Now then, now then, right over here, you'll see. We've got Mark in Second Avenue. He sent me a tacky postcard, which is a pair of women's breasts from the Costa del... So what is it? Costa del Packet from Salou. It says, Hi Ian, can you enter this into the tacky postcard competition? This card was given to me by a friend, Honest. After a trip to Spain, it was so tacky, I thought I should send it to you. Sorry I couldn't send it direct, but it wouldn't have got through the post. Dirty-minded postman. See ya, Ian, from Mark. There we go. Thanks for that, Mark. There you go. You're in that. And you also sent me a rather nice picture of the future Mrs. Perry, Deborah Harry, all dressed in black leather. <coughs> with, um, with fingerless leather, 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 leather gloves and far too much a black eyeliner. <laughs> Disgusting. I'm going to have that framed. I'm going to have that framed and put in my study once it's decorated. 267 Technal Road in Wolverhampton or 28 Castle Street in Shrewsbury if you want to send me your tacky postcards. Kim Fisher writes, Dear Ian, you want tacky postcards? Look no further than Steve's card stall at the indoor market, West Bromwich. Good morning, Steve. Would these cards tempt you to visit the town? One very boring shot of the outdoor market and one large aggressive looking fist greets you. I left West Bromwich to live in Gornal and believe me I'd sooner see a card with the pig on the wall than these. I love you Midnight Line, look forward to another ghost line please and soon. John Stark is here on the 27th. Please send me a signed photograph when you have some. An avid listener since you first started with Dave and you're still here. What a glutton for punishment. And there they are. There we go, a tacky picture of the outdoor market in West Bromwich with the British School of Motoring just opposite it. Uh, circa, I would say, judging by the fashions, probably mid-80s, probably mid-80s. Oh, there we go, that's pretty tacky. And then um, the hand and cross, which is a picture of a hand with a, strangely enough, a cross in it. Isn't that weird? There you go, that's that. So loads of entries coming in now for our tacky postcard competition, but the prize is rather brilliant. Dear Ian, can you please read this message on your Wednesday the 14th show? Uh, no, because I only got it yesterday. Honest, would I lie to you? Yes, I would, but I'm not doing on this particular occasion. The Cat, happy birthday. I love you loads. Glad you're back from the Badger Keeper. Thank you, Ian. By the way, I love all your shows, especially the Midnight Line. Best wishes always. That's from Gail. There we go, Gail. Sorry we didn't do it on the 14th, but we didn't actually get it until today and we rushed it rushed it totally onto earth for you um well i'll have to read the rest out next week because we're uh, i'm gonna get to the lines and that sort of stuff okay plank of the month seven five four one two three in wolverhampton and two three six two three five in shrewsbury in the lead at the moment is the securicor driver who can't drive he was the guy in the m54 tonight that nearly killed me i'm not exaggerating he nearly killed me he just didn't look rushed into a manoeuvre and I was right alongside him overtaking and I was perfectly entitled to it because I was doing about 70 mile an hour. Would I break the speed limit? Certainly not, although I had to to get out of that particular situation, officer honest. 
Also came back, we went to um, Radbrook School today to the barbecue, so uh, good morning to you if you were there. And I came back with a very impressive collection of green flies and bugs splattered all over my helmet. Hey, isn't motorcycling fun? Here we got first, we've got Tony to, to kick us off. Morning, Tony. He's listening to his wireless, but he's going to be here any minute, I can absolutely guarantee it. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. Are you there? Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! I'm here. You're there. I'm so, a wing nut and I'm doing it. You're doing it on the wireless, you are. I am. Now then, who are you going to vote for? Well... Secure a driver, very tempting. Secure a driver for a star. What a plank. What a plank. What a mega plank. Maybe, maybe he's a, a paid ninja assassin or something, I never thought of that. Very well could be. Could be, couldn't it? Could be a ninja assassin put on me by... Uh, other radio stations, jealous of this Not, show. Not uh, that um, uh, the, the one with the Relic Dinosaur place couldn't be. Oh, Jurassic AM? Yes. I think we've got to the bottom of the mystery. Yes. Yes, that's what it was. It was a ninja hitman. That's what it was. It was a ninja hitman from Jurassic AM. Absolutely. But why do they call themselves Extra AM? Mm, I don't know. Is it because they're doing something extra early in the morning? Mm, no. Ugh. Um, maybe less AM would, would be... Maybe we were to get older, the... Maybe mega old AM would be even better. I think Jurassic AM is the... Yes, perfect. Very perfect. Jurassic AM. We've got a big secret, we have. And what's the big secret? Oh, come on. Oh, we it. have! Yes, sorry! Yes, <laughs> we didn't do that in rehearsals. No, we, ha we have got a big secret. We have. And it is a, a huge secret. And it'll be revealed more later next week. Yes. Sometime so there. Stay tuned for our big secret. And, uh, share. Sure. That tattoo on her bottom. Yes. This way up. Yes. That's for when somebody makes well, love to her in front of the fire. No, it isn't. It's for when she does tours abroad. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, I thought it was uh, perhaps uh, when they make love to her. Well, no, you see, because touring is so expensive that what they do is they put her in a crate these days. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha, you see, you never knew that, did you? Oh, they again, I keep forgetting you're not actually in the biz, are you? Uh, I didn't know that, you see. Well, you I do thought now. It was because they're in front of the fire and they've got a stand up, so she settles back to shape that way. Because of all the plastic bits, you see. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, we can't sit on a radiator in case she melts. That's right. Well, her, her nose is her own. She picked it herself. Ah, <laughs> 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 Yes, the old ones are the best. The the old 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 old. Old. No, no, no. Do we have to tell that one, really? Can't we, can't we, can't we erase that bit? Are we? Well, it's OK. It'll be edited out when the, uh, when the final version of the show goes out. What, um, who are you going to vote for, then? The government. The government! Gotta be. Do you want to blame them? You can be the first person to do so this morning. Might as well. Fifteen minutes into the show, folks. Well, you got to blame the government. you got to, I mean... The well, Planks are unanimous. Why, what have they done this month? Well, nothing really, have they? Well, they picked on the poor, the sick. Yeah, well, this is it. The poor, the sick, the homeless. Uh, single mothers. Single mothers, they're doing nothing for crime at all. Yes, they are. They're doing lots for crime. They're encouraging it as a well, growth industry. It. There was another one today. What was it? He, um... Uh, a mugged a bloke mugged an old man, ran off. As he ran off, the old fella died of a heart attack, and I think he got a three-month suspended sentence or something. Oh God! It must be a special. That was a bit heavy, wasn't it? Well, it was also at the Old Bailey. So all I can gather is that the Old Bailey, to encourage trade, I've got a summer special on uh, special offers. Do they call it the Old Bailey because the uh, judges are that old? Very probably. Uh, perhaps they're Jurassic as well. On that basis, they'd have to call it Senile Dementia Bailey, wouldn't they? Is it? Well, they'd have to, yes. Yeah. Mm. Very close to it. Very senile, very demented. So the government for doing absolutely nothing about anything? Absolutely nothing about nothing. Not helping nobody. And the only people that are helping, really, is the crime wave. And, of course, themselves. And Mr... Definitely Mr Grey Day. How oh dare! No, oh dare! Oh, I've been nominated yet again. No, oh, I think I think you I think you might win tonight. You reckon? No. Oh. Big jam. Along with along with the security security bloke, yes. Security. Yeah, security. Is that what it is? Wouldn't trust him with me dirty washing if that's the standard I, of the driving. I wouldn't trust him with my with my smalls at all. I don't think I'd want to go anywhere near your smalls, not without a nuclear, chemical, and biological suit. Anyway, is well, that there you have it. All right, Tony. All right. We'll speak to you soon. So I just say good morning to Wills. You just did it. He'll be doing it in bed.
Ooh, uh. Listening. Yes. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you. And welcome. Uh, you're welcome, is what I meant to say. 754 123 in Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. It's Plank of the Month. Currently, we have the security guard driver on the M54 who nearly killed me around about quarter to eight yesterday evening. The government for not doing anything apart from appearing to be embarking upon a campaign to actually encourage crime by giving people who confess to killing other people. Uh, no sentences at all, and letting them off, and um, letting muggers who oh, difficult to say this without perjuring myself or something. Um, not perjuring, slander. That's what I was looking for. Letting muggers who are uh, instrumental in causing the deaths of old people just letting them walk away with suspended sentences. Surprised they didn't give them two hundred and fifty pounds and tell them to take a nice holiday to get over of all the stress. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. And we'll be back with more nominations after these. Guests of West Bromwich are famous for their new car deals. They say Elstridge's famous, but at guest prices, I personally prefer his brother, El Reg. You can buy an El registration diesel or petrol Escort for only 8995 on the road. How did we all be there? Special edition Fiesta Sunburst, just 6995 on the road. Ah, uh, don't forget options. The finance package that makes new fools more affordable. Get written details at Guess of West Bromwich, darlings. They're famous for their service, punters. Mind you, I did like Lawrence of Arabia. BSB Building Supplies, specialists in bricks, blocks and slabs from just 99p. BSB Building Supplies, Bank Street, Wolverhampton. Call Wolverhampton 730-974. The No Gimmicks, the Nusi Sale, is now on at Jeff Hill Electrical, Amblecote, Starbridge. Don't miss it. Hook yourself a whopper with the West Midlands Angling Centre. They're one of the leading tackle manufacturers in the UK, now open to the public for the first time. There's a full range of tackle and every type of bait you'll need with up to 50% off the recommended price. Plus rods and equipment for everyone from the tiniest tiddler to the rainbow trout. Don't be content with the one that got away. Visit the West Midlands Angling Centre, open all week in Bill Street off the Walsall Road, Darleston, near Ikea. Follow the signs or see local press for details. The incredible Co-op Homemaker Store closing down sale continues. There are hundreds of bargains to clear and everything must go. Double beds from $79.95. Children's bedroom packages just $189.95. Microwaves are $79.95. And upright vacuum cleaners just $69.95. There's reductions on tables and chairs, plus quality three-piece suites are half price. Get to the closing down sale at the Co-op Homemaker Store, Shaw Street, Walsall. Phone Walsall, 28127. Sarah says to me, your boyfriend's really got taste, hasn't he? Well, he chose me, didn't he? Now, she says, in clothes, all that at market trendy stuff. He gets it all at Uno Clothing, I say. Well, it obviously pays, she says. I'll say, if he sees the same thing anywhere else, so much the price will go cheaper. Oh, mm, she says, but that suits him very well. Not as well as it suits me, I said. Uno Clothing, the number one unisex fashion outlet in the Midlands, with fabrics and colours to tailor-make a style of your own. Victoria Arcade, Manda Centre, Wolverhampton, opposite Beatties. Beacon Radio. Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC 754-123 in Wolverhampton 236-235 in Shrewsbury It's Plank of the Month The government and the security call driver on the M54 who nearly killed me They've been nominated so far on this line here with the most famous catchphrase in the West Midlands and Shropshire It's Eric They've been nominated so far on this line Yes, I've heard that bit, Eric You play me a bit I haven't heard You can't buy catchphrases like this. He's arriving, everybody. He is arriving. You there? Yeah, yes, he's here. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Eric. Yeah. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Not so bad. Not so bad. Nice red rum impersonation, eh? I had a run to me, Graham down. You know uh, some of you blog, some of your fans, they got their wireless blading in the background. You can't tell a word they're saying. You're guilty of that. You are. Huh? You do that. I do that. You yeah. do. I to go. I turn mine down. Well, okay. There we go. Listen. Yes. Uh, after my deepest deep thoughts to Sylvia, who was on last night about them, um, 
two by two uh, lads that left, you know, for Australia. Yeah, I watched the second part of that tonight. Yeah, well, you know, a bit she of was it. really full up, I thought, when she was talking to you about it. She was. Yeah. My second point of view is, what happened to the Magic Treaty, Ken? I don't know. I'm not his keeper. It seems... I know you're not his keeper. It's a good job you aren't, because he'd perhaps be a different man. I don't know. You don't, do you, Eric? No. But, uh... My plank of the month... I knew we'd get there eventually. ...is that stupid old man that you had on last night, Walter. Walter? Why Walter? He's got a point of view, and his point of view was that um, yeah, men who father I mean, he said that men who father children should take the responsibility and not run away from it. Definitely, he said that, but there was no need for him to bring that girl up. He wasn't um, sick, was he? Pardon? Oh, see what you mean to, to bring it up as a subject. He yes. could have reached a subject different than bringing that girl up, it, uh, uh, stinging that girl with his sayings, couldn't he? Life is hard enough for a one-parent mother. Maybe when he talks about that he, he clothed his daughter and he reared his daughter till the age of 60, maybe he was working, perhaps getting two or three hundred pounds a week. So you reckon he, he shouldn't slam people who are he in desperate financial straits? He shouldn't slam a mother that's trying to pull her way through with a, with a child of three, uh, or two or three, or whatever it may be. I mean, they on about people such as the likes of the old people that find it hard to live on £52 a week pension money. But when you look at it at £52 a week and there's only one pensioner, and only one, but when she's got to think of, uh, rear a child... Did anybody tell you, when, when you were working, did anybody tell you that you'd end up living on £52 a week? Did what? Did anybody actually ever say to you when you were working, look, unless you make arrangements for yourself, you're going to end up living on £52 a week? No, they didn't. The little tinkers. No, you see, I, I, you know this, uh, what's this pension you used to pay when you went to work? Penny in the pound, was it? No, uh, consideration pension or so much. Superannuation. Eh? Superannuation. Uh, superannuation. Yeah, close enough. Yeah, well, I paid that, but I don't get nothing out. I haven't had nothing out of it. Well, how long is it going to take people to realise that it... Uh, it's it's a con, isn't it? It's a big con. It is superannuation is a big con. But when I was when I was working, I'm only earning as much as fourteen and fifteen pound a week, right? I was paying two pence hospital. I was paying three pence union. I was paying superannuation a shilling, and. What have you got back for it, do you think, Eric? Eh? What do you think you've got back for it? Nothing. Do you want to nominate whoever thought the of superannuation? The only thing that I've got back for it is hospital treatment. Which you could do without, really, couldn't you? No, I cannot do without it. I wish I could. That's what I mean. You know. I mean, I didn't mean that you could do without... I wasn't accusing you of malingering or anything. I was just saying no. that uh, it'd be ni a nicer life if you didn't have to have it. But, you see... If lots of these people, even these old people, and to work like they worked, and put so much a boy, and saved and scraped, there's lots of couldn't live today. But I would say there's a lot of people not living today anyway, they're just existing. That's it, that's it. And for him to slatter that girl, to, to slap that girl in the face like he did, She's not one by herself. I quite agree that they should trace the father's down. And I also think if they won't give the father's name, then they don't get... The only thing is they don't get the money until they do pay... Uh, you see, 
He said they won't give the father's name, didn't he? Some of the girls. Yes, he did. Yeah. So you'd force but them to. What's behind that is they won't do that. Are they threatened if they break their marriages up, that man's marriage up? Are they threatened by him? Well, it could turn out he's a Manchester United supporter, couldn't it? That's it. It's just like that, mm. isn't it? And you, you wouldn't want to wish that on any kid, would you? No. I mean, what a dreadful day would dawn when it was 18 and you had to say, look, I've got some terrible news for you. Your father was a Manchester United supporter. Well... You wouldn't want that, would you? I mean... Even worse, Bolton. We've only got soonest to thank where we are to deliver the, the Liverpoolians are today. We've only got soonest to thank. Should we nominate him anyway? I only nominate him as a plank. Yeah, that's what I meant. There we go. We've got to get him soonest in as well. And Listen. I also nominate Walter as a plank. And whoever thought of superannuation. And I've never received nothing from superannuation. Maybe it's in the post. Have you thought of that? Huh? Maybe it's in the post. Maybe yeah, it'll turn up tomorrow. Maybe a big fat check's going to turn up tomorrow, Eric, and, and then you're going to feel very sorry that you slacked them off, aren't you? Yeah, very true. Back in the real world, I don't think that oh, is likely no. to happen. I enjoyed that bottle of whiskey as Len brought me. Did he bring you a bottle of whiskey? <sighs> they haven't made it yet. They haven't brewed it yet. No. Well, it's probably, probably... It's in the pipeline, I would imagine. Listen, Eric, we're going to move on, mate. Eh? We're going to move on. Anyway. Onwards and upwards. God bless all. ta -ra. Good night, Ian. There we go, Eric, on the Midnight Line at Beacon and WABC. His nominations for Plank of the Month were Walter, who called last night, had a go at uh, single mums. Whoever thought of superannuation, uh, Graham Soonis, and let's put Bolton Wanderers in just for the hell of it. Okay, there we go, Bolton Wanderers with the very first. Oh, and Swindle Town. Yeah, go on, we'll have a few football teams in there to liven it up. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. We're back with Lawrence, he's a first-time caller, we'll speak to him after these. Well, it's about this time of day that I like to offer a bit of a boost to you, the public out there. So first on the line today we have a Mr. Stephen Barnard from Braintree out there in Britain. So Stephen, what's your problem? Hello, Vic. Hello, Hello. love. First off, Vic, could I have a picture of your lower jaw? Without doubt. Thank you. Now, I've landed the contract to nibble the perforations on the edge of the postage stamps. Well, you're a lucky lad. I'm a lucky lad, bingo. And I know it's a big break and everything. It is a big break. I'm still a little concerned as me and sizes mm. are slightly crooked mm. and might not be up to the job. Well, it's a common problem. It is a common problem. There could be a sudden increased demand for the stamp, you see. Now, is there anything you can do? Well, now then, Stephen, there's absolutely nothing I can do for you, but a Cadbury's Boost, it's slightly rippled with a flat underside, could help your tongue when licking the sticky bits on the back of a large brown envelope. Oh, you've misunderstood. It's the stamps that I'll be licking no, your no, I'm not, in, I'm not interested in stamps. Warsaw Tile announced the opening of their new showroom at Six Ways, Spring Hill Road, Warsaw. It's bigger and better than ever before, with free parking in their large capacity car park and an even larger range of ceramic tiles, adhesive, tools and accessories. Visit the new showroom at Six Ways, Spring Hill Road, Warsaw, or phone 0922 646 092. That's 0922 646 092. Call Kidderminster Carpets now. Cash in on the quality and cut down the cost. The very best selected Wiltons, Axminsters, Wall Twistpile and Stainmaster are all available with 10 months interest-free credit, subject to status. Now you can buy the carpet you really want and take 10 months to repay with Kidderminster Carpets. Visit our warehouses in Sturchley, Kidderminster, Amblecote, Stourport and Stourbridge or phone free. 0800-44-1155 Evans Hall Shop. The only dealer group with a 15-day exchange plan. 100% satisfaction? Guaranteed. <laughs> so we sell them. <laughs> Every Saturday night is Cabaret Night at Hardy's Cabaret Bar. With great food and entertainment from some of Britain's top comedians and music acts, it's a marvellous family night out. Admission and an a la carte meal cost less than £10. Monday to Friday nights, Hardys present Over 30s Disco, with Tuesday night dancing to hits from the 60s and 70s. Hardys have entertainment for everyone. Book now. Telephone Hardys Cabaret Bar on Block Switch 409 898. <laughs> It's 
starting up at the plank of the month on Beacon and WABC. No clear leader at the moment. Walter, superannuation, Graham Soonest, Bolton Wanderers, Swindle Town. Lawrence on 12. Oh no, that's not a nomination. That's a phone call. Um, the government for not doing anything about anything apart from seemingly encouraging crime by the stupid sentences they've handed out the past couple of weeks. And the infamous Securicore driver on the M54. Right, who's next? Lawrence, he's a first timer. Good morning. Hello? Way, hey, you've done it. There you go. That wasn't hard, was it? I heard that. You heard that what? About um, Plank of the Month. No, you're not. That was just, <laughs> you were just a call. It was just that um, my computer um, threw up the wrong data. <laughs> that's that's what it is. It's, uh, it's a rubbish computer, that, and I'm going to get another one here. There we go. Uh, initialised computer, too. It's rubbish, that. I don't, I don't know why I bought it. Who are you going to nominate, Lawrence? Um, I think it's John Tainton after WM. Oh, poor old old Mother Tainton. <laughs> He's delicate. Leave him alone. I don't know if you ever listened to his, his talk show. Don't be silly. Don't be silly, Lawrence. He seems to just use his show to, like, express all his own opinions. Is he a bully with a microphone, would you say? I don't know why he bother. has a has wind light line because he just, like, anyone who comes on with an alternative point of view, he just slags down and says they're wrong and all the time. Poor old Mother Tainton. He can't do right for doing right, can he? <laughs> he's very delicate and you should leave him alone. He's, he's, a, he's an old man. I know. And, and you should be... You, you should respect your elders. And, and anyway, he might be listening now. And and you, he'll be. Promise you'll send him some Kleenex. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, He's easy to upset. Promise you'll send him some Kleenex. <laughs> say good morning, John. Say good morning. Go on, Lawrence. Say good morning, John. Good morning, John. And how nice of you to listen to a decent phone show. <laughs> yeah. I just listen to his uh, when I'm waiting to listen to the Beacon Nightline, you see. Yeah, no, I was thinking how nice of John to listen. But you will promise to send him some clean acts to dry those yeah. little tears in old Mother Tainton's eyes. I'd like to nominate Take That and all their fans as well. Take that, whole contentious stuff, here we go. <laughs> Why take that? They're, they're just a fun pop act, don't they? Because they don't write any of their own songs and they just, like, they jump around on stage thinking they're the best thing since, you know. Neither did the Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles did. No, my mum wrote them all. Oh. <laughs> it's a well known, it is a well documented fact in Merseyside <laughs> that my mother wrote Sergeant Pepper's. See, when oh, she was right. hanging out, I've said it before, I've told everybody this before, nobody seems to believe me, but you see, as my mother went to hang the washing out in the sort of mid sixties, she used to whistle catchy ditties that she'd just made up. Oh, right. And Lennon and McCartney just happened to be walking past our house one day and they nicked it. And you couldn't walk. I mean, word gets round. She also wrote Bridge Over Troubled Waters. I remember coming home from school when I was about six and tripping over Art Garfunkel, who was hiding in a hedge, trying to catch the melody. You couldn't move for pop stars in the Perry household in the in the mid-60s in Hawthorne Road in Birkenhead. You just couldn't. It was famous. They flocked to it. A mecca. My mother wrote that. Listen, we've got to move on, mate. OK. Thanks for that. There right. we go. Take that, fans. You have been nominated as Planks of the Month, as have your group. Not by me, because I wouldn't do that sort of thing. That'd be a naughty thing to do. Um, Lawrence said they don't write their own stuff, and therefore there are, there are a load of old bobbins. There again, all the Take That fans will have been in bed since half past nine, won't they? <coughs> Oops. Who's next? Who's next on this line here? We've got Mel. Good morning, Mel. Hello. Hello, Mel. How are you? I'm OK, thanks. Rocking and rolling. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's true, that, about my mum, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> she was hanging... She used to hang out the washing and whistle a ditty, you see. Because I, I remember walking home from school down Singleton Avenue. Yeah. And, and there was, there was like, um, a post office. It, it's now um, a vacuum cleaner sales shop. But <laughs> it used to be where we used to go and buy our sweets, you see. <laughs> and this bloke with rather large lips <laughs> came in and he said, hi, like, hi, like, can I, can I, like, buy those sweets for you? Can I, like, be your friend? <laughs> and he disguised himself very, very cleverly, despite being nearly six foot two. He disguised himself very, very cleverly by wearing a school cap, a Woodchurch Road school cap, <laughs> and some some shorts. And he said, can I like, like, one, two? Can I come to your house for tea? And I said, yes, because my voice hadn't broken then, because I was only six. I said, yes. He, he said, my name's Mick. <laughs> right? And we went back, and I said, hello, Mummy. 
this is my new friend Mick. And he went, uh, hello, Mrs. Perry, like, uh, can I help you, like, hang out a washing, like, by way of return, for, like, his scrambled eggs on toast, what you're cooking is for, like, one, two, for tea. And as she walked out, my mother started to sing Jumping Jack Flash, which he'd written at lunchtime. Right. And he nicked it. <laughs> oh, you can, some of the tricks they got up to. Thing is, did he see the film? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, you saw the film. Uh, I mean, a number of times we had to shout out things like, you're not our milkman, you're Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> it was pathetic. <laughs> Ray Davis of the Kinks, dressed up as a milkman. When did you ever see a milkman at half past two in the afternoon, eh? <laughs> well, that was my mother's story, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to get shot for that if I go home. <laughs> So, yeah, absolutely true story, that. Oh, yeah, I can as, see this is really true. As I live and breathe. Oh, absolutely. As I live and breathe, that's absolutely. a true story. <laughs> now then, Plank of the Month, always an honour to do Plank of the Month. It was well, exciting to see who's going to win it. Who are you going to vote for? Yeah, I shouldn't actually agree with Eric because he was quite offensive after I telephoned you on the Tuesday. Who was Eric? Yeah. No, he probably just had a offensive head on. Oh, uh, well, yes, he, he's a... Just a bit of bad taste, but I have to agree with him that Walter really is Plank of the Month. Two votes for Walt. <laughs> Walt storming into the lead. Well, he, he actually, I mean, he actually said that, um, you know, that, that he would throw his daughter out if she came home pregnant, which was a bit sad, really. And also that he disowned his wife, not that I realised that, you know, a wife was a, a possession anyway, but he would, you know, discard his wife like a, you know... Well, he's obviously not from Yorkshire, is he? Because if he's from Yorkshire, he'd have said, I'd discard my whippet. <laughs> True. Because there are apparently some areas of Yorkshire that the women don't actually have the vote in yet. Well... <laughs> and they still walk three paces behind the whippet. <laughs> well, Round sort of some of the villages near Halifax, I believe. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, I mean... Talking about second grade women after what I you know, after I spoke to you on Tuesday, I really feel that Walter is I mean, if anything happened to his daughter that happened to me, then boy, she can really count on her dad, can't she? <laughs> so you don't reckon you don't reckon that Walter is being the pillar of support that is traditional? <laughs> well, if that's if that's his idea of fatherhood, you know, I mean, perhaps it's best that they do disappear into into oblivion, you know. It's a, but to actually call call that, that girl dirty was, was absolutely dreadful. Did he? Well, he did, yeah. <laughs> did he really? I've probably switched off by that time. Well, uh, well... I was probably counting my thumbs. Well, that's a bit sad, really, because, you know, I thought that was, I thought that was absolutely dreadful. You know, and... Um, now, this, why, did, why did he call her dirty? This, this was a, a, a young lady who phoned, who said, I'm a, one, I'm a single right. mother, I can't survive on the amount of money that the... Um, DHSS, the HSS, the SS, whatever they call themselves these days, send me. Yeah, well, you know, she, she, he said that the women should be on the pill. No, she, she should be on the pill. Oh, I remember that bit because I said yeah. I don't see why. Yeah, and, uh, you know... Well, I mean, obviously I do see why, but I just don't see why women, the responsibility well, for contraception should be women, or should be the woman's. Well, you know, which I have to give you sort of, uh, you know, a hundred out of a hundred for, you know, but, um... You know, well, in, with a face like mine, contraception generally tends to take care of itself. You know, <laughs> they really had a problem with that. You know, but he's he's the sort of he's the sort of bloke who actually, um, you know, you actually made a, a mistake. You said that I didn't report the crime that happened to me. Well, I did. Yes, you did, didn't you? But, but that nobody actually, wanted to know. Uh, but I think I think that um, you know the police at the time were all called Walter. You know, he was on the night shift. You know, when I reported it. You know, so. Uh, they were all just like him, you know. And I really feel that um, Plank of the Week is... is yeah, a month. You know. <laughs> a month, Plank of the Month. There's only 12 a year. It's a highly coveted sort of award. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Can't it be 52? <laughs> you, you'd like him to win it 52 weeks out of 52. <laughs> I really would. He was such a kind, gentle, caring bloke, you know. <laughs> I thought he was, he was really... Um, Really thoughtful, you know. Like the West Midlands answer to Joseph Stalin. Well, yeah, something like that, you know. OK, that's fair enough. He didn't agree with Walter. I think that is the vibe I'm getting off you, Mel. <laughs> that's the sort of vibe. I'm very sensitive to vibes, and that's the vibe that's coming through the microphone at the mm. moment. I must admit, the, the Securicore chap comes pretty, uh, comes a pretty good second. 
He was definitely a ninja assassin hired by other radio presenters, jealous. The, the trouble, the trouble is, that, unfortunately, is that there's so many, so many people that actually drive like that. I mean. In one week, last week, again on the M54, I nearly, I nearly sort of bought it twice through somebody else's fault. And you were in a car? Yeah, I was in a car, yeah, and uh, a bus pulled out right in front of me as, as I was cruising along nicely. And, and the other one was, was two, two lads in a, in, in a car, and they undertook me, and, you know, and uh, it, it was either move me out of the way or hit the lorry or get the police to, that were chasing them to catch them, you know, and I... In actual fact, it, I think I was the soft option. <laughs> so they went after you? <laughs> well, they've got to move me. Well, they, they, they undertook me, and I was overtaking a lorry, just about to overtake a lorry at the time, and they weren't going to hit the lorry. They weren't going to be caught by the police, you know, so I was a soft option, you know. So let's, I... let's look for a nice soft place to land the car. I look, there's Mel. <laughs> That'll do. Did I look this gullible? This is what I ask myself. I well, obviously do. Well, I look jolly angry, I did. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately I had a, my full-face helmet on, so I couldn't see how jolly... He didn't get my scurry look. Oh, right. I want you to know, pal, that if I hadn't have had my helmet on, you'd have got my scurry look good and proper, and I do, I do a great scurry look. <laughs> yes, I'll bet. I do a scurry look that can curdle milk. <laughs> That's how scurry my scurry... Do you want to see my scurry look? Yeah. Okay, all right, here we go. Pretty scurry, oh, that's, eh? That's horrendous. It is, isn't it? It's, that's really dreadful. Years, it's, years of professional training. My coffee has gone absolutely, really strange now. Yes, we find this, Mel. We find it's why I very rarely do it because anybody having uh, a little, little drink of something will find it's gone off because I've <laughs> done my scurry look. <laughs> It's wicked, isn't it? Absolutely <laughs> wicked. Listen, we're going to move on, Mel. Can I just say thank you for your sensitivity on Tuesday? Yes, you can. That's great. That's very kind of you. Thanks a lot. Okay. I didn't realise I had any. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's certainly... Can I have it in writing? <laughs> <laughs> it was certainly better than Eric's, and it was definitely better than Walter's, so... <laughs> yes, I suppose when you compare it to that, Attila the Hun would look quite sensitive, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, I'll put it in writing for you. You're very kind, Mel. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. There we go, Mel making her second appearance on the Midnight Line at Beacon and WABC. It's Plank of the Month. We've got a clear leader at last. Um, it's Walter. Walter called up last night. Walter, if you're listening and you want to defend what you said and nominate the people who've been nominating you as Plank, as Planks, if you see what I mean. Um, if you don't see what I mean, just take the words and rearrange them into some sort of order until they make sense. Okay. I can't be expected to do everything on this show, can I? So, Walter... Our non-sensitive male caller from last night is leading with two votes in the Plank of the Month competition at Beacon and WABC. We're back with more votes after this award-winning commercial break. There's a used car deal so good, you'll wonder where the catch is. Believe it, there isn't one. At Bridge Vardy Ford, you can buy any of their extensive range of used cars on not one, not two, not three, but four years interest-free finance. It's the deal you wanted, and it's the deal you shouldn't miss. Four years interest-free finance at Bridge Vardy Ford. That's it. No gimmicks and no catches. Get a written quotation now at Bridge Vardy on the Birmingham Road. Wolverhampton. Hi, it's Freshy at the Euro Fun Fair this Saturday. We'll be broadcasting live between 2 and 6. The Euro Fun Fair features 20 big rides that thrill seekers will adore, and I'll be trying every one. Hey, eh? I'm not doing that. The European Fun Fair at the Merry Hill Centre opposite the Copthorne Hotel, Merry Hill. See you there this Saturday. You know what they say, every girl's crazy about a sharp-dressed man. So there's only one place to go, Uno Clothing in the Manda Centre, Wolverhampton. We specialise in designer men's clothing that's stylish and unusual. Ask the ladies, they love wearing it too. Not only is it exclusive, Uno Clothing is also very reasonably priced. You only have to compare high street prices to see what we mean. Uno Clothing, Victoria Arcade, Manda Centre, Wolverhampton, opposite Beatties. For one-off style that's all your own. Here is probably the world's first environmentally friendly commercial from Cresta Blinds. You've been listening to the world's first environmentally friendly commercial from Cresta Blinds. If you'd like to know more about Cresta, ring Dudley 2523 for a free colour brochure. Cresta Blinds. They've always been green, and red, and blue, and beige. Thank you.
They're off to Imperial Direct Suites. Buy your new three-piece suite direct from our factory showroom, Nimmings Road, Blackheath, Hells Owen. Imperial Direct Suites. It pays to buy direct. They're off to Imperial Direct Suites. Buy your new three-piece suite direct from our factory showroom, Nimmings Road, Blackheath, Hells Owen. Imperial Direct Suites. It pays to buy direct. Hi, it's Freshy at the Euro Fun Fair this Saturday. We'll be broadcasting live between 2 and 6. The Euro Fun Fair features 20 big rides that thrill seekers will adore, and I'll be trying every one. Hey, eh? I'm not doing that. The European Fun Fair at the Merry Hill Centre opposite the Copthorne Hotel, Merry Hill. See you there this Saturday. I've had some onions, everything seems to be repeating on me. Okie dokie, 754 in Shrewsbury. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. Plank of the Month, Walter in the lead at the moment. Next on the lines though, we've got um, Martin somewhere. Yeah, yeah, Martin's on this line here. Hello Martin. Hello. We shifted you. Well, that was good, I don't mind. You were on line 10, now you're on line 11. Oh, I'm going up in the world. You certainly are. And it's all That's thanks good. to this show. That's amazing. Remember us when yeah. you're at the top. Hey, I don't know what you do with your look, but my poor cat has been running around frantically for the past two minutes. Yes, it's a very it's, face. it's a very dangerous thing, my scurry face. Well, that's Scurry good. look is very, very... Oh, I, you don't want to mess with scurry look. You don't. And I have to be very careful, obviously, when I do it, because of the, the all the laws surrounding broadcasting. This is true, could melt, you could melt radios and things. Absolutely right. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't have a few callers saying, my radio has melted. Two, that's a curricord driver. I mean, we can't afford to lose to, to lose a broadcaster of your skill. I mean, because it could come from... Can't we? Oh, I'd heard... <laughs> the boss that? I'd heard a very, I've heard a very worrying rumour yesterday from a friend of mine who claims that John Tainton's programme is just assumed to be taken over permanently by Stephen Rhodes, that well-known broadcaster. Who? Exactly, that's what I Says thought. Says it all. Says it all. Actually, what I thought was, oh my God, no. It's another program I won't be able to listen to. Because one person that really wise would be Stephen Rhodes. Why? Because he's a prat. Oh yeah, that. I've forgotten it about that. Well, you know. I've forgotten I mean, about that you know, bit, that element. Not, he may be a very nice person, but I don't no. think he's much on his, on his broadcaster. No, no, he used to work here. No, I wouldn't say that about him at all. <laughs> he's going to be brutally honest. No. <laughs> I see, fair probably, enough. Probably about the last thing I'd say, actually. Well, there you there go. There again, he'd say the same thing about me, so that's fair enough, isn't it? Mm. Also, about Tony Prince, he used to be a famous broadcaster once, you know. Poor old Tony Prince. He used to be on Radio Caroline North, and he was on Luxembourg for years, and he sort of seemed to disappear. Oh, this would be uh, one of Jurassic AM yep. signings, wouldn't yeah, it? Apparently, yes, he used to be a famous broadcaster. He's from Liverpool, I think, if I remember rightly. He is, because he used to go out with my best friend's girl, uh, my best friend's sister. Oh, there you go. Called then. Melanie Givens, and I've got the pictures of him in the goat. And <laughs> just, uh, they're ready to roll, you know. Well, oh, that's interesting. Absolutely. Very nice. And he failed to get me Slade's autographs when I was a kid. That's the sort of guy you're dealing with. I see. Obviously not a very nice person. Not that's at all. That's why you hate him, isn't it? I don't, I don't you know. hate anybody. I couldn't be bothered. Just no, that's why you don't like him so much, then, because he didn't get your auto. I mean, it's probably a good, probably good enough reason. Well, they're easy enough to forge. Well, that's true. In fact, I think I can still do a noddy holder. Um, that's, that goes like that. It's a big loopy sort of signature. There you go. Yeah, I could probably sign his checks. Oh, there we go. Hold it, hold it up oh, to yeah. camera. Hold it up to camera three. There we go. It's great, though. Look. That's very good. It's excellent, that. Very good. But um, also, I want to nominate the whole, the whole of our wonderful government. Oh, two votes for the government. Oh, yeah, because what they do, you see, is they have this wonderful scheme, this care in the community idea. So what happens is a, a psychopath who's ill and he's sort of uh, put, placed away somewhere where he won't harm himself or anybody else is told, go on then, out onto the streets, son. And, of course, how does he make living out on the streets with no help and no support from the government and social services? Well, he mugs people. And he kills somebody. Chiefly because he was out on the streets when really he wasn't safe to be out on the streets. So, for care in the community, read no care in the community. That's it. Or, or don't care in the community. Where does the care bit come in? I don't understand this. It doesn't. It's just a massive, a massive cheat as a way of government saving millions of pounds so that they can spend it on other things like, um, well, 
giving Mr. Major lessons so he won't fall over when he's speaking and things like that. Yeah, how to, how to, walk, how to walk and breathe at the same time. That must time. cost a hell of a lot of money. It must. Yeah. But, you see, the thing is, I mean, I feel very great sympathy for the family of that old chap who died, but I also feel sympathy for that, that guy cause there was, who committed the mugging because there was no way he should have been allowed out. He did the decent thing. He pleaded guilty and said, well, look, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I di didn't mean to do it, but um, I'm pleading guilty. So that what happens is that I think perhaps the courts have done the sensible thing. They well, what they've, said, the, look, they've put guy, him in for, he's being treated as an inpatient. Yeah, I thought he was, I heard he was meant to be an outpatient. No, initially as an inpatient. Oh, yeah. But well, that's, too, that's too little too late. I think what the government, what, what the court has said is, look, don't give us, look, government, don't give us your dirty washing. This guy should not have been outside. We won't push give him a long jail sentence because that won't give him, do any good for him. He won't get the help he needs in prison because the prison psychiatric service apparently has sort of been sort of running on a wing and a prayer for years. So I think the courts have just said, look, the problem's in your court, in, but the, problem, the ball back in your court, to coin a phrase, and we don't, we don't feel that we should give him a long jail sentence. It's up to you, mate. What are you going to do? And poor Mr. Major is sitting there dithering as usual. So caring the community means no care in the community yep. and actually, actually withdrawing of, of funds from the budget oh, that's it. To, to care for people who need care. And if they don't get care, they are a danger. Well, the thing is, I think, yeah, that, that's it. And I think that uh, the problem is that Virginia Bottomley, I mean, she's such a, a nice, caring, reasonable person. Who she's apparently, a Who apparently is saying, well, because she's a member of the government, that she will do some nasty, unreasonable things. I think it's about time... Virginia Bottomley woke up to what she's doing and thought, um, well, do I really support a government which allows people who are known, uh, known psychopaths to be isn't out it, on the street? Isn't it the problem, though, that what, what, what they probably sat down and done is thought, right, we'll think this through, care in the community, we'll actually release people from psychiatric hospitals because then they can go back into the, the arms of their caring families because they tend to think that everybody lives like they do. Um, also, another problem, that's probably one of the things, yeah, but also the problem is they thought, oh, charitable, charities will help. Fine. Just after a government-created recession where no one's got any money to give to charities, that, that does take real class thinking. Oh, God, I wish I had a brain like that. But if, they're, <laughs> if they were capable of class thinking, they wouldn't be politicians, Well, would they? This, is, this is probably That true. is the sad truth of it. Listen, I've got to move on, so Martin. Walter's a very brave man. He's obviously decided that he wouldn't want any child growing up with him as a grandfather. That's why he's going to throw them out. So you're going to vote for him as well? Oh, yeah, what the hell, why not? OK. Go on, why not? Cheers, okay. mate. Thanks a lot, mate. Bye. There we go, Walter's still in the lead. Three votes. Uh, second, the government. And two votes as well for the secure call driver who tried to assassinate me before on the M54. Back with more calls at Beacon and WABC after these. If you're thinking about buying a Renault, talk to Renault Wolverhampton. They've got a deal that'll make you smile. Renault Wolverhampton, your number one Renault dealer who cares. In Boston Road, Wolverhampton. Call Kidderminster Carpets now, cash in on the quality and cut down the cost. The very best selected Wiltons, Axminsters, Wall Twistfile and Stainmaster are all available with 10 months interest-free credit, subject to status. Now you can buy the carpet you really want and take 10 months to repay with Kidderminster Carpets. Visit our warehouses in Sturchley, Kidderminster, Amblecote, Stourport and Stourbridge or phone free. The No Gimmicks, the Noosey Sale is now on at Jeff Hill Electrical, Humblecote, Starbridge. Don't miss it. Quasar and McDonald's in Starbridge have joined forces to produce a children's birthday experience that's out of this world. We kick off with a game of Quasar, the futuristic laser game, where every party goer gets a hat, badge, and free Quasar return ticket. Then it's off to McDonald's, everyone's favorite place to eat. Book for more than 10 kids and the birthday child goes free. It's the party of a lifetime for only £5.50 a head with Quasar and McDonald's, High Street Starbridge only. Book now on Starbridge 441841. The Horse Shop in Bridge North now provides a free saddle fitting service on new and second hand saddles. For made to measure or expert advice, phone 0746 762 572. Distance is no object, part exchanges are welcome. The Horse Shop Bridge North, probably the cheapest in the Midlands. Visit the Co-op Superstore Walsall and Heath Hayes Cannock for the fantastic summer food sale. This week's offers include a pint of milk for only 19 pence when you buy 10 cartons, fresh pork chops for only 99 pence a pound when you buy 5 pounds or more, Walker's Crisps for only 14 pence a packet when you buy a box of 48. 
and many more. Guests of West Bromwich are famous for their new car deals. They say El Sid's famous, but at guest prices, I personally prefer his brother, El Reg. You can buy an El Registration diesel or petrol Escort for only 8995 on the road. How did we all be there? Special edition for Esther Sunburst, just 6995 on the road. And don't forget options to finance package that makes new foods more affordable. Get written details at Guess of West Bromwich, darlings. They're famous for their service, punters. Mind you, I did like Lawrence of Arabia. Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC with an interesting fact. Did you know that Mentos chewy spearmint mint contain hydrogenated coconut oil? There you go. Have you ever wondered what I did during the commercial breaks? I read the ingredients on packets of mints. Well, doesn't everybody? Who we got next? On this line here, we got Paul. Good morning. Morning, Ed. Good morning, Paul. Who are you going to vote for? Got to be Graham Sooners. Oh, two votes for Sooners. We yeah. haven't put him in for a laugh before. Why Sooners? Giving John Barnes an improved contract. I mean, what are, I'm, I'm, I don't know why they just didn't let him go to Villa and get some money for it. Or I mean, call the vet. Yeah. I mean, there's no way. Just the vet. Yeah, there's no way he's worth the sort of money they're offering him. How much have they paid him? I haven't actually seen details of the contract. Is it I like, don't know, but it's well over £10,000 a week. Um, £10,000 a week to be injured. Yeah. Ten thousand pounds a week for sitting at home doing nothing. I could do that. When they could have sold him on and got a bit of money for him. To the abattoir. I mean, they'd give him twenty, wouldn't they? Twenty quid at least. Yeah. And the second one is that security core driver. Three for the security core driver. Yeah. We've got to find the guy. And Walter. And Walter. Walter's still in the lead yeah. with four. What is it? What Walter touched the nerve. What was the nerve Walter touched? Well, I mean, like, he rabbits on about it. I mean, I think the stupid thing he said was, like, he'd throw his own daughter out if she got pregnant. I mean, I think... Uh, what, well, even if she was married? Well, I Presumably mean, not. Yeah, but I mean... And I mean, like, maybe, as Eric said, when he was bringing up his um, daughter, maybe he was on 200, 300 pound a week. I mean, it's not the kids' fault that they've got to want parent family, is it? No, I think whatever arguments rage about how the state should support single parent families the one thing that you do have to bear in mind is that you can't take it out on the kid because no. the kid didn't have to be born now so why should the kid suffer well i can see absolutely no reason at all but there's one big argument that says that's precisely what's happening well yeah so Yabu sucks to walter yeah all right mate we gotta move on because we've got to go to the news walter's still in the lead graham soon has got two votes the security core driver on the M54, he's got three votes, and the government have just... Uh, no, they've got three votes as well now. There we go. Who's going to win Plank of the Month? We'll find out in the second hour of Beacon and WABC's Midnight Line. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. Ba A loyalist terrorist group says it's contaminated food in stores across Dublin. Peter Russell reports. According to the Ulster Freedom Fighters, poison jams and preserves are now in the shelves of a number of supermarkets in Dublin. The Loyalist Terror Group named the stores involved in a statement issued in Belfast, and Irish police say they're taking the threat seriously. Searches are being carried out at a number of stores, and it's understood some food may be removed from shelves before the supermarkets open for business this morning. Peter Russell, IRN, Belfast. Labour says a schizophrenic given three years probation for killing a pensioner should be locked up. Paul Gordon from South East London pleaded guilty to manslaughter. The attack happened after Gordon had refused to take his medication. Shadow Health Secretary David Blunkett says the government must rethink its care in the community policy. Virginia Bottomley has said exactly the same words over and over again. And it's time not for platitudes, not for talk of perhaps and maybe, but to actually act to protect both the public and the individuals committing those acts. Two-year-old Reese Daniels, whose parents went to the High Court after delays in his treatment, has undergone a two-hour bone marrow transplant operation. Doctors at Bristol's Royal Hospital for Sick Children say he's in a satisfactory condition. Jeremy Beadle's top-of-the-range Toyota's been wrecked after a garage employee took it for a spin and crashed it. The TV prankster wasn't amused when police told him his car had been driven through the front window of a plant hire shop in London. Nicky Broyd reports. It was a case of watch out Beadle's cars about for the owners of the shop. Meanwhile, the professional practical joker thought he'd been framed when police called at his home in the early hours of the morning. He believed his Lexus was safely parked at a major Toyota dealer's and wasn't amused to discover it was a twisted glass-covered wreck on show in a plant hire shop. 
Police say a garage employee who had Jeremy Beadle's permission to drive the car was behind the wheel at the time of the accident. Independent Radio News. The latest satellite picture is produced by John Warner from Orbital Station Meteosat 4. The most accurate forecast. So there is a god then. Staying dry with long clear periods overnight, the low 11 Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Later today, dry with sunny periods, average temperatures with a maximum of just 20 Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The outlook rain spreading from the west on Sunday, cool and showery on Monday. Temperature now, 11 Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. It's Plank of the Month, 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. Clear leader at the moment is one of our coolness from last night, Walter, with four fabulous votes. Take some doing that, Walt. Well done. Let's see if you're still in the lead at the end of the voting session, which is ooh, around about, I suppose, two o'clock, something like that. Anyway, who's next? We've got Steve next. Good morning, Steve. All right, Dan. Good morning. And how are you this morning? What have you got planned, Steve? Well, first, this has got to be the government out it for, uh, like, punishing the poor and disabled people for, like, the mistakes they've made. But they haven't they not actually done it yet, have they? Well, I mean, they're on about VAT on eating bills and stuff well, like that. Well, now, that they have done. That that was passed um, okay. through the, was it the Commons or the Lords or something like that? Why, why do we have the Lords? I don't know. It's got to be a contradiction in terms, isn't it? I, I remember Channel 4 used to run this program called Highlights of the Lords. <laughs> it's got to be the shortest program in history, that. No, I don't really know. Just about look, at the this, Lords. look at this guy's falling asleep technique. Oh, he's snoring. It's a delight to listen to. Do look half dead. <laughs> That's probably right. Did I say half? Three quarters. I mean, there's one poor old fella. I mean, they dragged him up from somewhere. Probably dug him up from somewhere. And he was, he was like he had a Zimmer frame. That's like the judges, and talking about the judges, and this, uh, it's also this like the justice system. It's because uh, I was recently, you know, burgled, and the pair that did it, the quarter, and they'd like been working in a gang, and they'd like done loads of other houses, and I only just remembered my house. And um, the one got off scot free, and the other one just got a caution. I mean, there's just no justice, is there really? Just a wrist slap. Yeah. And this was, this was, not, that, yeah. This was an organised thing. Yeah. A way of making money. Definitely. So they decided that they'd quite like what you've got, thank you very much. Yeah. And so it's, um, it's got to be the government first. Well, that, I mean, that's, uh, they're on a level with Walter at the moment, then, the government. Well, what should happen, then? How do you, how do you get harder? I mean, it, it seems to me that every time we do a law and order phone-in, right, everybody says, look, you've got to get harder. I mean, even Labour. In, in the news just was saying, oh well, this schizophrenic guy, he refused to take his medication, so you've got to lock him up. I think you have got to get harder, because otherwise he's just going to continue it. I mean, people, people, you know, some people think, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm only going to get away with the caution anyway. So they'll just keep doing it, well, they, some of them do. Well, I mean, there's been some in the paper, I think it was either tonight or last night, when somebody did another house while he was on bail. I mean, so they're just, I'm just not bothered. I'd hate to see the government's cotton wool bill. Because they, they obviously walk around with heaps of it stuffed in their ears. No, they don't listen to anybody else. No, they don't, do they? They just seem to... Westminster seems to be a different sort of world. And you know, then, not for the likes of us, Steve. I don't think it is. And um, on my other... None of my... My other... Yeah, none it of my... It took me two years to be able to say nomination. Yeah. I don't... I mean, you can practice it at home, you know, but it takes a very long time to be able to say nomination. Nomination. Very good. Hey, you're a fast learner. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the other, what, well, it's got to be Ozzy. Ozzy Idealist for leaving the album. Well, he might like walking out on the album. He did, didn't he? Yes, and I'm got to be, I'm a, one of the number one Albion fans. Boink, boink. Yeah, and... Baggies, I'm, baggies and things. I mean, we'd probably be better off with Burke and Shaw now anyway. What's happening with that? And I'm not sure, someone like he's broke his contract or something. Oh, they, they're going to pursue it, Tottenham, are they? I mean, um... I think West so. Brom. Well, I'm definitely going to, uh... I think I'm definitely going to do something about it. Because he's a bit rough aid. I mean, I remember him. Me and my mates, like, we've been on about it. You know, at the end of the, the Port Vale thing, the playoff? Yes. He was saying at the end of that, this means more to me than, you know, like, the other one. And when, no way am I going to Tottingham. That's right. He's, and, and he just, he's done exactly what he says he wasn't going to do. And I think it's what you says first. You've just stunned all the people I know and all the other supporters. First, him stunned. And then it's just the resentment, you know, like, well, if he's giving me down, need him, stuff him. Yeah, it was exactly the same when, when Dag Leach left Liverpool. Yeah. 
I went through exactly the... F I, I was just in a state of abject shock I think for about two days. I couldn't believe that, that Daglish would li leave Liverpool. But I remember when um, w the day Shankly resigned. I mean, that... And I, I, just, I still don't believe that happened. Well, um, the other, me and my mates, we, like, we used to go and watch him train sometimes at the back of the Hawthorns. And he, when we sit him, he, he, he wore the happy space and you could see he was just like sitting on the bench and, you know, like he was, he was a little bit miserable, you know. Well, I probably remembers the Falklands, you know. <laughs> That's probably it. I'd, I'd probably be miserable if I was an Argentinian. Well, you never see him smile. You never see him. And I mean, I'm saying, perhaps we'd be better off without him because, I mean, if he, mind you, one of the arguments we might say as well, uh, well, if he's going, is it Premier? They mean they're still going to be Premier League, ain't they? Are you talking them? Well, yeah. for next season, perhaps. Because um, my mate goes, well, if if somebody says you're going to be getting at least about twice as much money, I mean, where would you go? I mean, would you rather stop there or, uh, you know, be stopping at this club where, you know, I mean, he's only been there for a year anyway. Or would you, uh, well, perhaps, you know, try for a bit more money because perhaps it was a shock because he's only been here for a year because there's perhaps Dale Gleish, I mean, for somebody who's been a bit longer. But which would you rather do? Would you rather earn, say, £20,000 a year for five years, right? Mm. Or £40,000 a year for one year? It depends when you want about retiring, eh, really? Yeah, but, I mean, with, with that Alan Sugar guy... Oh, well, I hate him. That Sugar, he's, he, looks a, he looks a bit nasty to me. Well, they do, I, I reckon that what, what goes around comes around. Yeah. And I would trust Alan Sugar... Slight, no, I wouldn't actually trust him as far as I could spit canal water, right? Yeah. And soon I reckon, unless they win heaps of trophies next season, which I can't see, yeah. then I reckon he'll get, he'll, he'll get the shove. I'll tell you this much, it'd make me laugh now. If yeah, at the beginning of the season, that Tottenham just get just get really kicked out. They just get really kicked. They just, you know, they just don't do very well at all. Because I think, and the album do really well, because I'm just going to say, I hope we can beat the Wolves as well next season. Well, the back end of last season, um, uh, Tottenham, Tottingham, yeah. visited Anfield and, and got a 6-2 thrashing. I can only assume that Burroughs wasn't playing for Liverpool on that particular day, or if he was, the two goals were probably his fault, because he's crap. Um, they got beat 6-2. They're not... The, I mean, if Liverpool beat you 6-2, you're in real trouble <laughs> in this day and age. So I... I I hope they get knocked out of the Premier League, I really do. Because, I mean, if he can work with Sugar as well, I mean, that's got to be a bit of achievement as well. They deserve each other. I think they do, definitely. OK, well, listen, good luck next season. OK. And uh, I shall actually be down at the Hawthorns. I can't remember what, what the date is, when you, you entertain the mighty tram here. OK. I'll be with the Super White Army. <laughs> All right. All right, then. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Steve. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. There we go. Steve Oswaldo, Ardelis and the government, his two contenders for Plank of the Month. I'm getting a message through my ear. What was it? Say again. All oh, right. OK. Matt, is it on this one? Hello, Matt. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Matt. We've got you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, yes. I've got two. Two Planks of the Month. Yes. First one, Andre Agassi. Oh, wow, yeah, eh? <laughs> what did you see in her? Who? Barbara Streisand. I will see what you mean. I just thought I had to explain to you that Andrew Agassi, or Andrea Agassi, um, just has long hair he isn't, and waxes his chest. He is, in fact, a bloke. I will see what you mean, because he's uh, allegedly, you know, a yeah. funny girl, mm. eh? Well, he's already got a bit of stuff, hasn't he? Allegedly, allegedly. yes. Yes, and he's, uh, as you so... Um, so, uh, succinctly put it, bit of stuff, was getting a little bit upset about the attentions of Ms. Streisand. Because she went, she kept sort of... Cheering for him. Yes. And watching him and things. <laughs> I mean, what sort of woman is she if she makes him wax his chest? Would you wax your chest? Well, no. No, me neither. <laughs> no way. I mean, I don't mind doing my legs. I don't mind doing my legs and my bikini line, but I'm not doing my chest. <laughs> no, well, I wouldn't. She's about 50, isn't she? Oh, well, that's just round the waist, yeah. <laughs> I mean, past the sell-by date. With the best will in the world that Barbara Streisand fans throughout the globe, she's a little bit ugly, isn't she? Well, she's not the best-looking woman in the world. I've seen better. Yes. I look at her and I think, a busted sofa. <laughs> that's what I think. I mean, she's very talented. She can sing. She can act. She's got more money than I have. <laughs> but she's ugly. That's probably it, the money. Absolutely. Into each life a little rain must fall. Yes. 
I mean, she's got everything apart from looks. Whereas I've got everything apart from money and looks and talent <laughs> and personally, yeah, it's really a uh, short story. There. So at least he had the decency to get knocked out. Bit more talent than the next chap I'm going to talk about. Andrew, that was Andrew and not Andrea, wasn't it? Andre. I reckon it should be Andrea after after the, the it's revealed that he waxes his chest. Real men, real men. A don't wax their chests, and B don't eat quiche. You've been eating quiche, haven't you? <laughs> you have. You had a sneaky slice of quiche. You have. All right. All right. Uh, so he's got more talent than than John Tainton. Oh, old mother. Oh, this is <laughs> no. <laughs> Dear old mother Tainton, we of the Midnight Line are Beacon and WABC. I can see that now. Well, poor old mother. Tain does his best. Leave him alone. He's boring. Well, <laughs> some people might like that. <laughs> I can't actually think of anybody offhand, but but somebody somewhere might. And it's very nasty. I mean, we're all big mates in the showbiz. No, we're not. We hate each other. Jealousy's rife. Um, so poor old, old, do you think he waxes his chest? Um, I shouldn't think so. Well, we should phone him up and ask him one night. But he's always controversial, isn't he? He always goes, he always sways away from what other people's opinions are. You too, must be joking. On the odd occasion I've caught it, it's been about a, about as controversial as a Kame advert. <laughs> That's how controversial. Oh, I think it's controversial. Okay, old mother's in there with two. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Don't worry about it. You have to speak your mind, and you have to tell the truth, and that's what the show's all about. Yes. But I think poor old mother Tainton, and he does his best. <laughs> very, he's probably a very nice man who's kind to his mother. I'm sure he is. All right, we got that down for okay, you. Okay, you. Sure, mate. Sure. Seven five four one two three in Wolverhampton, two three six two three five in Shrewsbury. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and W A B C. And we will be back to the lines. We've got Damien. We'll speak to him after this award-winning commercial break. BSB Building Supplies are the no-fuss material supplier to the public and trade. They offer probably the cheapest supplies in Wolverhampton and deliver free within 10 miles on all orders over £50. BSB Building Supplies open seven days a week in Bank Street, Wolverhampton, with ample parking available. Telephone Wolverhampton 730 974. The Horse Shop in Bridge North now provides a free saddle fitting service on new and second hand saddles. For made to measure or expert advice, phone 0746 762 572. Distance is no object. Part exchanges are welcome. The Horse Shop Bridge North. Probably the cheapest in the Midlands. Guests of West Bromwich are famous for their new car deals. They say El Sid's famous. But at guest prices, I personally prefer his brother, El Reg. You can buy an El registration diesel or petrol escort for only 8995 on the road. How did we all be about a special edition Fiesta Sunburst? Just 6995 on the road. Ah, uh, don't forget options. The finance package that makes new fools more affordable. Get written details at Guess the Worst Brummage, darlings. They're famous for their service, punters. Man, you, I did like Lawrence of Arabia. King World Spring Sale is now on. They're clearing quality three-piece suites from just £495 and are still offering two years interest-free credit and an amazing £500 part exchange on your old suite. Ask for a written quotation. Dream World have hundreds of three-piece suites on display, including leather hide and Draylon. But they don't just sell suites, they also stock a lovely range of reproduction furniture, dining tables, videos, hi-fi cabinets and sideboards. Visit the Spring Sale at Dream World, open seven days a week in Stallings Lane, Kings Winford. See local press for details. Well, it's so easy to buy a suite at Dream World. When you need copies fast, whether 100 or a million, Alpha Graphics Wolverhampton can help. They provide one of the fastest and most comprehensive copying services in the West Midlands, with volume prices from under one and a half pence per copy. Whatever your requirements, call Alpha Graphics Wolverhampton on 0902 711 151 for all your copying and binding needs. Call Wolverhampton 711 151 now. If you haven't received your star's new shop scratch card, call into your local shop today and collect one. Then listen to Graham Hall between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. next week and enjoy a second chance to win, win, win. Star's new shops, more than your local news agent. <laughs> Beacon Radio.
Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC, 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. It's Plank of the Month. Clear leader still is Walter, closely pursued by... I'm not explaining it again, you should have paid attention before. Closely followed by the government. All right, who have we got next? We've got... Do -do 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 Damien. Hello, Damien. Good morning. Good morning. I I've seen you. <laughs> in the, uh, the omen bit. All oh, right. Spooky, darlings. Very, very spooky. Now then, Plank of the Month, who are you going to nominate, Damien? You. Me? Good. Yeah. Why? For slagging off Man United supporters earlier on. Yeah, the should-haves. In our finest hour. Oh, dear me. They're all crawling out the woodwork oh, now, aren't yeah. they, eh? All crawling out. I suppose you all went to the, uh, the, the game where you clinched the championship, did you? I went to every game, actually. Oh, well, I don't mind that so much. It's the uh, it's the ones who crawl out the woodwork when a team starts winning that I don't oh, like. Oh no, I'm a season ticket holder. You admit it. Oh yeah. You admit. I mean, you're going to say, if you have you got children? No. If you have children, are you going to tell them? Of course. Damn me, you've got no shame, have you? <laughs> no embarrassment. Well, I mean, oh. doesn't it doesn't it worry you slightly that uh, the time before Manchester United won the league, we hadn't actually landed on the moon? <laughs> we actually sent, you know technology to Mars and beyond since then. We've had um, 11 different governments. You're just one of these bitter scouts, aren't you, that can't accept we've finally done it? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes. Well, unlucky. Very. Because we have. Well, it's not the winning, it's the retaining. <laughs> and anyway, don't don't call me a scout. I'm not a scout. I'm from Birkenhead and it's totally different. Right. Would you like to be called, um, 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 what do they call people from Stoke? <laughs> Well, that's broadcastable, is what I meant. Uh, you wouldn't like to be called somebody from Stoke, would you? No. A Stokeonian. No. Or a posser, that's what they call them. Do they? Oh, here we go. Here comes the hate mail from Stoke. <laughs> What's he going around being called a potty? Anyway, one more thing. Yes, me. Sorry, I haven't written me down yet. Me. <laughs> me for being beastly to Man United. Can not... we have a dinosaur-free day on Monday? I would. That's not a bad idea. We're not allowed to mention dinosaurs at all through the programme, right? Nobody's mentioned them once yet. Oh, yes, they have. Yeah. Once. Yeah. Okay, no dinosaurs on Monday. Well, you're getting sick of it. Oh, I certainly am. Aren't you? Well, no, I'm going to go and see the film on Wednesday. All oh, right. Um, and I'll probably get sick of it after that. Yeah. Because it better be good. Because I get real upset. Because you go and see these films and they're like billed as being totally brilliant and great. When you get there, the crap. That's it. They're never as good as they made out to be, are they? No, the only, thing, the only thing that constantly entertains me when I go to the cinema and I, and I can rely on the fact it's going to entertain me are the commercials at the beginning. Mm -hmm. that were made in 1953 <laughs> and they're still showing them you know women with big platform boots oh, actually they're wearing them again now aren't they come to yeah. think of it yeah. okay right, so then. we'll have a dinosaur free day on Monday okay absolutely no mention of Jurassic at all and uh, I'd like to wish Manchester United good luck next season but uh, I was brought up to believe that lying is simple <laughs> and we'll see you on the field of honour young man yes all right mate all right mate Ta-da. Ta there we go. I've got a nomination there for being beastly to Man United. Well, why not? <laughs> them. Anybody but them. Please, please. I, I Even Everton win the league next season. Just not them again. I couldn't stand it. Tanya, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Who are you going to vote for? There's a load of them. Oh, good. Well, go on. Start at the top. There's Boris, Simon, Lister, Dickie, Paddy. Yes, and what are they? They're all planks, are they? Tell me why they're planks. Because uh, they're male chauvinist pigs and they're sexist. Why is Boris a male chauvinist pig? Was this Boris who I had the interesting discussion with yesterday about um, agricultural drainage systems in the Midwest of the United States? No, I don't think so. Oh, uh, well, so where are Boris and Co now? Mary Hill petrol station. And why are they sexist? Because they just stand. They, they take the mickey out of everybody. Are they Especially wenches. Are they, se are they sexist to you? Yeah. Well, bury the hatchet and go and make them a cup of tea. 754 123 in Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. After that, you might like to make them some sandwiches or something like that. Is that alright? No. No? Mm -hmm. You've got no sense of humour, Tanya. That's your problem. Who have we got next? On this line here, we've got David. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Ian. Have um, you got a sense of humour? I certainly have. I appreciated that last comment. I thought it was wonderfully done. Tanya has had her surgically removed. Yes, indeed. Sad, isn't it? She deserves it, the sound of it. She does? Yeah. Now then, David, Plank of the Month, who are you going to vote for? Well, I'm afraid it's another vote for you. Me? Good. Plus, 
plus uh, a sizable group of your listeners, actually. Oh dear, oh dear. It'd be a bit stupid writing a letter to myself, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, no, I'd like to have a, a kind of serious discussion with you. Um, I've been listening to the Midnight Line for the last few nights and I've been tempted to call on a number of occasions and I've packed up the courage tonight um, because, quite frankly, I'm angered on occasions by um, the simplistic manner in which people come to the conclusions which they do on your on your Midnight Line on actually quite serious topics. Like what? I'd like to take as an example that these two... Um, cases which have been um, in the Old Bailey the last few days, the uh, mugging case today, and the Elliot case, the chap who killed the music teacher. Yeah. Um, now, an awful lot of your listeners phoned up um, and came out with this kind of cavalier attitude, oh, they should be locked up. Um, but that is an opinion, isn't it? Yeah, it is an and opinion. People, people arrive at opinions by a variety of routes. Right. And I but, like the, but the most common way of forming an opinion is to rely, as we all do to some extent, on stereotypes, because that's how yeah. the human psychology works. Quite right. Yeah, I would like to question the way in which some of the, a lot of the people actually do arrive at their opinions. I think it's actually quite dangerous. They obviously don't give it an awful lot of consideration. Well, but, if they did, we wouldn't have a Tory government, would we? Um, quite so. Quite so. That's probably quite possible. Um, but, I mean, for example, they say on this, this mugging case today, um, you know, the impression I get is that most people consider that he should be locked away. Um, you know, a full prison term. And that being vindicated by the Labour Party in our last news bulletin? Uh, well, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm sure. I think that was probably misinterpreted. I think they probably meant he should be locked away in an institution, which I agree with. Um, he's obviously severely maladjusted and obviously needs some kind of treatment. But um, can you honestly convict a guy for murder or even manslaughter when all he actually did was mug the bloke? Um, his, his crime was mugging. And what occurred afterwards was unfortunate, there's no doubt of that, but you cannot convict a man um, for a crime which he did not commit. He did not murder the bloke. So if, you, if, you, if you get into a car when you're over the limit, yeah, mm -hmm. and you're well over the limit and you strike somebody mm -hmm. and you kill them, mm -hmm. you just get done for the drink, do you? That's completely different. No, it isn't. You, you're comparing being schizophrenic to having um, eight pints of alcohol. It's completely different. Well, take the uh, take the the Elliot case. Yeah, it's not different at all. Um, it's exactly the, the same. You, you you ultimately have to take the responsibility for your own actions, don't you? No, not if you are not responsible for those. Which okay, I but if you're not responsible for your actions, then you shouldn't be walking the streets. That's quite I mean, so. That's and quite all, so. all we're really arguing about is whether or not the guy should be in a prison or he should be in a psychiatric unit in, in the case of the, the schizophrenic. And I think, to be fair to most callers, they said they think he should be in a secure unit. And I think they've pointed to the fact that the reason he isn't is because of this um, don't care in the community lark. Okay, okay, let's move on to the second one, then let's move on to Elliot. Um, let's look at this, the facts of the case as I've understood them. This guy is walking along the street, he's drugged up, he is um, drunk, and he's going out getting his kicks, slashing tyres. Okay, the guy, is, again, is severely maladjusted, without that. whether we can say that's his fault or not um, is difficult to say, but let's take the... F this is the situation, he is drunk, he is on drugs, and he is obviously maladjusted. Okay, this music teacher, um, don't get me wrong, I feel immensely sorry for him and his family. Um, but he does what you shouldn't do. You should not come out and interfere with somebody, particularly not armed with a mallet. Um, the guy wasn't slashing his tyres, he was slashing one of his neighbour's tyres. The obvious thing to do is to pick up the phone and call the police. Okay, fine, he comes out. Um, this kid is drugged. What he probably sees is a guy coming out with a mallet. Um, Maybe waves his knife. I'm, I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling the police is obvious to you. When, when was the last time you called the police? Um, uh, a couple of years ago. And they turned up, and everything reached a satisfactory conclusion. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't similar circumstances. I is it not possible that that he'd been through this scenario before? Sorry. Is it not possible that he had been through this scenario before? Yeah, it's quite possible. Yeah. And had lost faith in the police. Yeah, OK. Look, listen, you know, I'm, I'm looking really here simply at the conviction of the guy and whether or not he got the right conviction. I quite agree with you that the, that the police response times are something which needs looking at. There's no doubt about that. I quite agree with you that the treatment of um, uh, mentally ill pe um, people within the community needs looking at. Um, but I'm simply looking at, at the conviction here. OK, this kid was drugged up. He probably saw a guy coming out with a mallet. Best case scenario, he waved a knife in his direction. It happened to stab him in the heart, OK? Again, if that, if that is what happened, um, the defence lawyer is given an option. Um, given that he believes that his client is innocent, he only has a couple of options. He can he can go for 
not guilty on grounds of diminished responsibility, which they probably considered seeing as the state that this guy was in, or self-defense, which they obviously opted for. He obviously believed that his, that his client was innocent, and he went for the best defense he could choose. You have to go for a defense within the law um, and use the, use those options which are available within all. There are, are only a certain number of options. He obviously chose the one which he thought had the best chance, and it worked. I would hate to see a guy um, go to jail for, for a crime which he did not commit. Now, a lot of your readers... Listeners. Uh, sorry, listeners, yes, call and say the legal um, system should be made harder. People should be given stricter sentences. You can guarantee that if that had happened, um, people would soon get excited if, if, if folks were locked up for crimes that they did not commit. Um, which, which again, but that's already that's already happening. Yes, I mean, that is that's already a fact happening. of life. See, the thing the thing that I would say is that I, I would actually turn this right back on you and say that you've taken too simplistic a view, and that if you listen carefully enough to the, to the contents of the show, uh, then what what you're doing is taking selective calls because over over a period of two hours, then all these different views were expressed by yeah. different people. Yeah, Ian, I'm playing devil's advocate. Um, this is this. I'm trying to provoke debate. Um, I'm not saying that all this is my own point of view. What See, I want to do is try and encourage a debate on your program which has some kind of sense to it. And get no, you don't want to do that. Well, I mean, we've, you have good debates on your program and, and some of them actually come out with some very, very interesting points. The one bit, the one bit that made me slightly suspicious of the Elliot case mm -hmm. was that, OK, yeah, you could, be, you could plead self-defence to an extent, I suppose, if somebody turns up with a mallet. You've got to ask yourself the question, what would you do? Yeah. And most people said we'd leg it, but then we went into a physiological discussion on the autonomic nervous system. He'd probably fall over if he tried to run with it. Well, the fight or flight mechanism. Yeah. I mean, you, you do one or you do the other, and it's totally beyond your control which you do. He, mm -hmm. he fought. Mm -hmm. But what I think is... Um, the one bit that I think was underplayed and undermentioned was the fact that he kicked the guy once he'd stabbed him. And then shouted to his missus, allegedly, I'll do you like I did your old man. Right. Now, th that, to me, is exceeding reasonable force. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know that... The so, on, on, that ba on that basis, you see, you have to define what reasonable force is. Yeah, you And do. It's, it's a grey area, because it is, it's it something is. that we've, we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, like a, a guy uh, broke into a gun shop to try and nick some stuff. And they kept a gun behind the counter for just that eventuality, and they shot him. Mm -hmm. Was that reasonable force? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They said it wasn't, but they yeah. gave him a suspended sentence. Right. So I, I think that if this case is going to lead anywhere, it's going to lead to a definition of what reasonable force is, and when you can use it, a tighter definition. Yeah. Because at the moment it's too grey an area. Yeah, you're quite right. I don't think there are many ways which you can tighten it up. It is always open to interpretation. It's always open to um, a jury to interpret. And one of the things which came out, I think, last night was a guy phoned up and said he thought these juries were a load of rubbish and they should be replaced with sort of one or two people who, who um, would be able to judge. I think that, again, is a dangerous thing to say. But, but, but that's exactly what the government are proposing. Um, I don't think they're proposing that uniformly, um, p possibly at a certain level um, in the criminal courts. But there. then you could be cynical enough to say, well, well, that's where it starts. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. yeah. But then I think another point that was made last night that I thought was a really interesting one was the fact that you either have a jury or you have somebody sitting there judging it, right? You don't have a judge who directs a jury. Yeah, that's right. The judge, the judge is, is purely there to carry out the, um, to, to, to ensure that the proper running of the trial and to carry out the jury's verdict to pass sentence. But it seems to me that they get far too involved. Um, yeah, ined inevitably the, the conduct of a case depends to a certain extent on, on which individual judge is there. Um, but, I mean, the, law, the, law, the legal system can never be perfect. That is a fact of life and you can say that there are ways in which you can tighten it up, um, which might simply provoke other problems. I think you just have to... Um, take things as, as best as you can and improve the system little by little and this can only be done by, by public debate, by, by debate within the House of Commons, by people expressing their views. Um, which, which is, is what why we're I phoned up tonight. Which is <laughs> well, all right, we're about to square one on that. Yep. All right, listen, I've got to move on because we've got to pay the bills. Yep, go ahead. All right, but thanks for that. Okay, good speaking to you. And you. Cheers. Ta-ra.
Even if you did vote for me, giving me two votes. Oh, well, never mind. 754 123 in Wolverhampton, 236 235 in Shrewsbury. We'll be back to the lines after this. Dream World Spring Sale is now on. They're clearing quality three piece suites from just £495 and are still offering two years interest free credit and an amazing £500 part exchange on your old suite. Ask for a written quotation. Dream World have hundreds of three piece suites on display, including Leather Hide and Draylon. But they don't just sell suites, they also stock a lovely range of reproduction furniture. Dining tables, videos, hi-fi cabinets and sideboards. Visit the Spring Sale at Dreamworld. Open seven days a week in Stallings Lane, Kings Winford. See local press for details. Well, it's so easy to buy a suite at Dreamworld. On Sunday, August the 1st, Hollybush Aquatics plays host to the annual BKKS Midstaff's Koi Show. From 11am, you can consult the experts, talk to the dealers, and see some of the finest koi in the Midlands, all undercover. Admission is just £1, and children under 14 go free. For details, call Hollybush Aquatics on 09 22 418 050. Hollybush. Hollybush Aquatics, M6 Junction 11, Waston Road, Shares Hill. Visit the Co-op Superstore Walsall and Heath Hayes Cannock for the fantastic summer food sale. This week's offers include a pint of milk for only 19 pence when you buy 10 cartons, fresh pork chops for only 99 pence a pound when you buy 5 pounds or more, Walker's crisps for only 14 pence a packet when you buy a box of 48, and many more. If you haven't received your Star's New Shop scratch card, call into your local shop today and collect one. Then listen to Graham Hall between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. next week and enjoy a second chance to win, win, win. Star's New Shops, more than your local newsagent. Sarah says to me, your boyfriend's really got taste, hasn't he? Well, he chose me, didn't he? Now, she says, in clothes, all that at market trendy stuff. He gets it all at Uno Closing, I say. Well, it obviously pays, she says. I'll say, if he sees the same thing anywhere else, so much the price will go cheaper. Oh, she says, but that suits him very well. Not as well as it suits me, I said. Uno Clothing, the number one unisex fashion outlet in the Midlands, with fabrics and colours to tailor-make a style of your own. Victoria Arcade, Manda Centre, Wolverhampton, opposite Beatties. Beacon Radio. Midnight Line on Beacon. Oh, I'll just tweak myself up, shall I? Ooh, uh, Midnight Line, Plank of the Month, still in the lead, is Walter. The government can be a very credible second. Um, I'm on a par at the moment um, with Graham Soonis. Andrea Agassi has also been nominated, as has Oswaldo Ardilis for doing a runner on West Bromwich Albion. Still another 25 minutes to get you voting in. We've got Stuart Nash. Good morning. Good morning, Ian. Good morning. Who are you going to vote for? Bus drivers on the 98 bus route in Birmingham. Oh, that's... OK, specifically the 98. Yeah. This wouldn't be one that you happen to use by any chance, would it? Use it every single day, yeah. Ah-ha. So but you're a regular customer? I am, yeah. You pay their wages, you do. Yeah, they just... They don't talk, they grunts. What would you... What would you do, though, if you were a bus driver? their attitudes. I mean, my friend was on a bus going home on this bus, and um, he's got trouble walking, he has to walk the stick. Ooh, fine overnight, probably. The low 11 Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. It will say dry, honest. Later today, dry with sunny periods, average temperatures, maximum temperature 20 Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The outlook rain spreading from the west on Sunday, cool and showery on Monday. Temperature now 12 Celsius, 54 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Okie dokie, me old culture lovers. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. Only ten more to go after tonight. And then um, it's off for two weeks. Well, I mean, I'm off for two weeks. The Midnight Line enjoys its, its summer break. Um, island hopping in Corfu this time. Very nice too. Nice weather. So what we got for you tonight? We've got lots to cram in. John Starkey's going to be on the show on the 27th of this month, which is... Ten days from today, it's uh, Tuesday into Wednesday. John's a clairvoyant, so stick that one in your diaries. 
And we've also got Plank of the Month, which we're going to do this morning. It's your chance to nominate the person who has wound you up most over the past 28 days, or however long it is since we last did Plank of the Month. Yeah, I don't know. Don't keep count. Any old way up? Who's in the running? What happens is this. You nominate um, whoever it is you want to nominate, and if you particularly agree with somebody's nomination and think, yeah... That's a, that's a jolly good idea. Then you just phone up and add your support, your weight of support, to that particular nominee. The person with the most votes at the end of the session, who, uh, Madam, which is around about sort of um, two o'clock. Two o'clock. Keep the lines open until around about two o'clock. The winner, the winner gets a letter off us informing them of the, the newfound status as Plank of the Month. And absolutely riveting award ranks right up there with the uh, the oscars and all the rest of it so who's in the running well i reckon that barbara cartland um somebody married barbara cartland's daughter apparently and there's some sort of connection there with princess diana as well i really can't be bothered working out what it is something like i don't know stepdaughters something like that and she married a guy called count your fingers or something like that some frenchy anyway who uh it must be off his head. It must be a right plank. Because they say, don't they, if you want to see what your wife looks like, is going to look like in 20 years' time, look at the mother. So, in his case, he'd be looking at Barbara Cartland. And yet, he still went through and married her. Amazing. What a plank. So, count the fingers, or whatever his name is. You could put him in. Who else is up there? Or oh, John Major's always good for a vote, I think. Could be this this month, because of the the way they've been looking at cutting back on various benefits. You can make whole groups Plank of the Month if you want, because there's, the country seems to be split at the moment. The nation is divided as to whether or not single mums are a bunch of scroungers on the state, as one half suggests, or as the other half suggests, which generally do tend to be single mothers, I'll give you that, that they are they're, they're basically just trying to bring up children against all the odds, having been deserted and abandoned by the fathers who have just reneged on their responsibilities so you can nominate whole groups you can nominate individuals they don't have to be famous i mean if the guy down the chip shop's giving you grief or something like that you don't believe his portions are big enough Ooh, uh, stop tittering at the back please then you can nominate them one memorable plank of the month a couple of years ago was actually won by a guy who ran a laundrette so it could be absolutely anybody it doesn't have to be somebody famous the numbers you need 754123 in wolverhampton 236235 in shrewsbury just to make sure that we count them properly, we'll initialise the computer. They'll never fall for that, never. There we go. I know it sounds vaguely like a piece of A4 paper being ruffled by the microphone, but uh, it isn't honest. It's state-of-the-art uh, wafer chip technology. Can't beat it. Not with a stick. Can't beat it. OK, so I'll put my nomination first. And my nomination is the Securicor driver, who was on the M54 at around about a quarter to eight this evening, just past Telford, uh, the turning for Telford Central, on the Shrewsbury bound carriageway. Um, if that was you, you are my plank of the month because you nearly killed me, pal, because you basically can't drive. And I am going to find out who you are. I couldn't be bothered hanging around to take your number because I was too busy trying to uh, manoeuvre out to save my life. What basically happened was, me... I looked behind me, I did. Look behind, nothing. Clear signal. Moved out parallel. Uh, as I as I overtook the Securicor van, I was parallel with it. And the I noticed that the wheels started to sort of point towards me. At which point I kicked down a gear and accelerated out of the way. At this point, uh, Chummy decided that he was finally going to signal. And then as he saw me, he, did, he looked. So what he actually did is instead of mirror signal manoeuvre, he did manoeuvre signal mirror and you're a plank mate and you're dangerous and quite frankly if you are representative of Securicor's drivers then I wouldn't I tell you what I wouldn't trust Securicor with my washing never mind anything valuable okay so Securicor driver on the M54 you are my plank of the month and I'm going to be tracking you down buddy you're not getting away with that one right oh, I enjoyed that got that off my chest <laughs> loony Right, uh, before we go to the lines, who's been writing? We've got the dreadful tacky postcard of the year competition. That's up and running. 
And here's some more dreadful entries. Oh, well, I can't read that one out till Monday for some reason. Here's another totally dreadful one. Um, some really fat and horrible children in Welsh dress, and it's greetings from Wales. Good morning, Wales. Dear Ian, we're writing to complain about Wales. There's so much to do here. Today we're on a day trip to a local telephone box. We've been forced to come on this school poetry week. Today we explored the irony surrounding a red wheelbarrow. We now feel, feel we are true culture lovers and can't wait to get home and jump under the duvet with you. Say hi to Scott, Eric and the captain from Jess and Joe. Read this week commencing Monday the 19th. But there you go. I mean, that really is dreadful. That dreadful little Welsh dr national dress. Why they bother with it is beyond me. And for no apparent reason, right next to it is the Snowdonia Railway. Great. OK, send us your tacky postcards. The winning tacky postcard gets um, a Culture Lovers Do It At Midnight t-shirt. Now then, now then, right over here, you'll see. We've got Mark in 2nd Avenue. He sent me a tacky postcard, which is a pair of women's breasts from the Costa del... So where is it? Costa del Packet from Salou. It says, Hi, Ian, can you enter this into the tacky postcard competition? This card was given to me by a friend, Honest. After a trip to Spain, it was so tacky, I thought I should send it to you. Sorry I couldn't send it direct, but it wouldn't have got through the post. Dirty-minded postman. See ya, Ian, from Mark. There we go. Thanks for that, Mark. There you go. You're in that. And you also sent me a rather nice picture of the future Mrs. Perry, Deborah Harry, all dressed in black leather. <coughs> with, um, with fingerless leather, 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 leather gloves and far too much a black eyeliner. <laughs> Disgusting. I'm going to have that framed. I'm going to have that framed and put in my study once it's decorated. 267 Technal Road in Wolverhampton or 28 Castle Street in Shrewsbury if you want to send me your tacky postcards. Kim Fisher writes, Dear Ian, you want tacky postcards? Look no further than Steve's card stall at the indoor market, West Bromwich. Good morning, Steve. Would these cards tempt you to visit the town? One very boring shot of the outdoor market and one large aggressive looking fist greets you. I left West Bromwich to live in Gornal and believe me I'd sooner see a card with the pig on the wall than these. I love you Midnight Line, look forward to another ghost line please and soon. John Stark is here on the 27th. Please send me a signed photograph when you have some. An avid listener since you first started with Dave and you're still here. What a glutton for punishment. And there they are. There we go. A tacky picture of the outdoor market in West Bromwich with the British School of Motoring just opposite it. Uh, circa, I would say, judging by the fashions, probably mid-80s. Probably mid-80s. There we go. That's pretty tacky. And then... Um